Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss how to get the equations. Now, when we want to get the equations, you would notice that the form that I'm giving you is for any graph. Okay, it doesn't need to be sin. It can be any of the graphs. Okay, now, when you look at the equations, there's four specific adjustments we have. Two of them you had already done in grade 10. It was A. And the effect of A was it times the Y. Now when we want to get A, the method of getting A is to take the maximum minus the minimum and divide it by 2. But now you must be a bit careful because sometimes they don't give you the entire graph. So when I'm talking of maximum minus minimum, I'm talking within one period range. If I give you a graph like this, then you tell me, listen, this is the maximum and this is the minimum. But then what if I only draw this part of the graph? Can you see how it is so deceiving? Make sure that when we are talking of maximum minus minimum divided by 2, I'm talking of the maximum minus minimum within one period range. So in order to get A, we're going to say maximum minus minimum divided by 2. How do we get B? To get B, you are going to say old over new. Now what does that mean? What it means is if you look at your x-axis, and then you look at your mother graph. Now you remember your mother graph. Your mother graph is the very, very first graph you did. Okay? Then you're going to say, if I look at my mother graph, if I take a sin graph, that original point is 180 degrees. That is considered an old point. But if I take a new graph and I tell you what is the equation of this graph? Now the old point at this specific point is this one here. Can you see? If I'm looking at the mother graph, which is this graph, then the end point is 360 degrees. So the old point would be 360 over the new point, which would be 180. And it would give me an answer of 2. But let's say you decided, hey, I don't want to use the last point. I want to use the middle point. Now the middle point of the new graph is 90. And the standard point Remember, we're talking of the exact same points. Like, you know that's one point. Then you know that's a second point. That's a third point. These points that I'm giving you, there and there, all these points are on the mother graph. So you can use any of those points. Okay? So let's say you decided to use 90. Then the old point is standardly 180. That's from the mother graph. Divided by the new graph, and we get 2 again. So when we want to get B, we're going to say old divided by new. Okay, let's take now the adjustment with C and D. When we're working with C, C means that the graph had shifted right or left. We are working specifically with the X value. Okay, so when we're looking at the X axis, we need to know what are the starting points. Now we know the starting points of the following graphs, right? Again, remember I'm referring to the mother graph. The starting point of a sun graph is 0 and 0. The starting point of a cos graph is 0 and A. Now when I'm referring to A, I'm specifically referring to this part here. That is the starting point of a cos graph. And the starting point of a tan graph is 0 and 0. Now when I'm working with C, 
then I'm specifically working with my x value. If you look at the starting point, now the reason I'm only looking at the x value is because sometimes the graph can move up. Then you have to adjust both ways. But you must learn to only look at one dimension at a time. So when I'm working with the x axis, you know, A, hey, it should have started on 0 degrees on the x. But now, if I give you a graph, and I'm giving you a sin graph, and you see, hey, but this thing is starting on minus 30. So what you're going to do is, the starting point is going to substitute into C. So your C now becomes, it should have been on 0, it's starting on minus 30. So this becomes your C. So what do I end up with? I end up with, if you take the equation, it would have been sin theta minus, remember the equation has a minus, and then I'm on minus 30. So you would write sin theta plus 30. Okay, so we have sin theta minus. Now this minus is from the equation, and then minus 30 is from the graph. So my final answer is sin theta plus 30. But in the exam, if they ask you, what is the value of C? Then the value of C is minus 30. Okay? Alright. So, the C is dependent on the starting point of the x-axis. Now, what is D? How do we get D? D is the y-axis. Now, when we talk of D, we have to look at the y-axis. Can you see? So D is linked to the y-axis. So when you look at the graph and you say, okay, so my sin graph should have started on 0, 0. Now it's starting on 2. So what is my D? My D is equal to 2. So when you're looking at D, you have to look at the y-axis. When you're looking at C, you have to look at the x-axis. When you're doing this, however, you have to remember your board mass at all times. In other words, when you are given information, you always start with A and B. Why? Because that is based on multiplication. After you've sorted out A and B, then can you determine C and D. You can't start by determining D because it will especially affect you on your cos graph. Because your cos graph is on zero in amplitude. Now if you didn't work out the amplitude here, and you just randomly decide, hey, I'm choosing one, it's wrong. Because what if it was five? Then you, you, your starting point should have been five. So you must first start, sort out this before you can sort out this. Multiplication, board mass. So this is multiplication. It comes before addition and subtraction. Thank you for watching.